Hi, my name is Abigail. I'm a product manager in the Checkpoint R&D, and I'll show you today an anti-phishing workflow using CloudGuard SaaS. So let's uh, do this demo from the perspective of a hacker. My target today is John Doe. He's the CFO of Watercore, and he's using Office 365 for emails. I'm going to try to fish his corporate email. So let's send him a phishing email. Now, let's take a look at the CloudGuard SaaS portal. I'm going to log in to my online portal. This is where we manage CloudGuard SaaS. Here you go. When I send that phishing email, we can see that on the dashboard, a new event was generated, alerting me about phishing. We can see here that this event is in a state remediated, which means that an, a remediation action has been taken. And in the specific case, the email was quarantined according to policy. Now let's take a look from the end user's perspective at John Doe's mailbox. This is what we see here. John did not receive the original email that I will show you in a minute looks uh, kind of different, but instead John received a quarantine notification. This is something that the administrator can choose to turn off or on and additionally can change um, to fit his needs. He can change the text, he can change the signature, um, and he can also decide what John can do with this notification. In this, in this specific case, John can click here to request a restore of the original email from his administrator. So let's go ahead and do that. Great, now let's look back at the Checkpoint Cloud Guard SaaS portal. Let's dive into that phishing event first of all. Here on the side, you can see why this, this uh, email was detected as being a phishing email. Two engines are running in Cloud Guard SaaS to identify um, phishing emails. First of all, a URL reputation service. Second of all, an anti-phishing algorithm. This is a machine learning algorithm that's looking at over 250 features, uh, parameters, if you will, in the email to determine that an email might be phishing, might be a spam, or even might be a phishing with a lower level of confidence. And you can adjust that threshold to distinguish between suspicious phishing and actual phishing. You can see here some of the parameters that um, led to that risk uh, verdict, that phishing verdict. For example, the language that's contained in that email is typical of phishing emails, or uh, the fact that the DMARC signature is missing from the email's header, or again, the fact that the domain uh, of the sender has a very low traffic, which is uh, often an indication of a low trust domain. On the side here, you can choose to set exceptions. You can trust the email address, you can trust the IP address that's sending the email, the domain or even just the nickname. Back to that restore request that John put in. We can, we can decide to actually follow John's request and restore that email from quarantine by clicking here. And you can see here in John's mailbox that the quarantine notification is replaced by the original email. So we will not follow the link, but if John had clicked on that little click here, he would have gotten to a phishing site and he was uh, basically uh, risking his uh, credentials compromised. Let's now take a look at the actual policy that triggered that phishing event and prevented this attack. Let's open that rule under Office 365 emails and take a look inside. The first thing that I want to point out is the mode here. We are running in a protect mode that's doing protection inline. Even though we're using APIs to connect with Office 365, we are still able to block an email from even reaching the user's mailbox until it has been inspected 
and we are sure that it's a safe email. Second of all, you can see here the scope. Currently, the rule is protecting all users and groups in this company. You can uncheck this checkbox and decide to only protect with this specific rule a set of users, a set of groups, or uh, anything you would be interested in doing here. And now let's take a look under advanced. And specifically, let's take a look at the phishing workflow. As you see here, we decided that when a phishing email was uh, identified, the email was going to put in quarantine, that we would alert the user, and the user might uh, re is allowed to request a, restor a restoration sorry, from the admin. You can decide to deliver the email with a warning, or you can decide to quarantine the email without even notifying the user. Up to you. Here, you have the option of configuring the actual quarantine notification. And below, you have the option of choosing which admins to alert and how to alert them. So we just saw how CloudGuard SaaS can protect your organization against phishing emails for Office 365. We also provide uh, the exact same protection for Gmail and many more SaaS applications.